The BLM 575 has a two-bolt, two-piece clamp design. To install, remove both clamp bolts and the back part of the clamp band. Position the lever onto the bar and place the band on the back side of the bar. Make sure the arrow on the clamp is facing up. Insert the bolts and tighten them, beginning at the arrow end of the clamp. And use a 4 mm Allen wrench to tighten the bolt next to the arrow first. Tighten until the bolt stop turning under light pressure. Beginning at the arrow end, use a torque wrench to tighten the clamp bolts to 6 to 8 newton meters or 53 to 69 inch pounds. Clean the entire lever with alcohol and a clean rag. If you have removed the lid unit of the lever, top the lever off with mineral oil and reattach the lid. Clean the entire lever with alcohol and a clean rag. Before installing the brake pads, make sure the pads are oriented correctly. Some brake pads are right and left side specific for the caliper. Install the brake pads into the brake caliper. To install the brake pads with a cotter pin type pad axle, insert the brake pads and spring into the caliper, push the cotter pin through the caliper, pad and spring, then bend the longer end of the axle to secure it. Install the red brake pad spacer and pull the brake lever a few times to set the pad spacing. For calipers with aluminum pistons like the BRM775 or BRM595, use a plastic tire lever or piston reset tool to push the pistons back into the caliper. And then tighten the fixing bolts to the torque specification of 6 to 8 newton meters or 53 to 69 inch pounds. Finish securing the bolts with either the cap or wire method. If you're using cap style bolts, then secure both fixing bolts with the cap, making sure they are in the correct position. If you're using wire type bolts, then secure the two bolts by wiring them together. Pay attention to the routing of the wire around the bolts. The bolts will work together with the wire to keep from coming loose. Cut any excess wire after completing the wiring method. Once the brake system has been bled, position the caliper onto the adapter, insert the fixing bolts, and hand tighten them until the caliper is slightly loose on the adapter. Remove the red pad spacer and then reinstall the wheel. Pull the brake lever a few times and then while holding the lever towards the handlebar tighten the caliper fixing bolts to center the caliper and pads over the rotor. Make sure the bolts are torqued to the required specification of 6 to 8 newton meters or 53 to 69 inch pounds and are secured with either the caps or wire. When attaching the banjo unit to the caliper, make sure that the two O-rings are attached in the grooves on each side of the banjo. Depending on which banjo bolt is being used, attach the hose to the caliper with the banjo bolt with either a 3 mm or 4 mm Allen wrench. Tighten the banjo bolt to the specific torque specification given in the service instructions. An angled cut will not allow the insert to sit flush with the end of the hose and may cause fluid to leak after the hose is attached. It's time to attach the connecting unit, olive, and connector insert. Before you install the connector insert, note that the SMBH90 connector insert is shorter and has a larger inner diameter than the insert for the SMBH80 and BH59. Always check to make sure you're using the correct insert for your hose. It is comprised of the adapter, washer, and C-ring. 
Due to the design of the aluminum spider, the RT AD10 is not compatible with the newer RT76 rotors or RT86 ice tech rotors. To install, place the adapter down on a flat, clean surface with the pins facing up. Set the 6 bolt rotor onto the adapter with the pins coming through the holes. Set the washer over the rotor and secure the adapter and washer with the C-ring. Make sure the C-ring is inserted securely into the groove of the adapter pins. If the C-ring is not properly inserted, the rotor may become loose and cause the brake to lock up. After installing the adapter, attach the rotor to the center lock hub as you would all other center lock rotors. That's it. Insert the piston exposure tool into the caliper. Pull the lever until the piston comes in contact with the modified bleed block. Remove the block. If the bike has been ridden, clean the piston with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. Push the piston back into the caliper Install the bleed block into the caliper and expose the same piston again. If it is still dirty, clean again with the cotton swabs and alcohol. Apply a few drops of genuine Shimano mineral oil to the sides of the piston. Do not use any other type of lubricant on the piston. If you are working on a new caliper, then you will need to only apply the mineral oil to the piston. Push the piston back into the caliper. Rotate the piston exposure tool and repeat the procedure for the remaining pistons. Performing the bleed procedure is nearly identical whether using a bleed nipple or the bleed valve with the caliper. Installing and removing the bleed valve is the only additional step to the bleeding process. Hold the caliper above the brake lever with the bleed screw facing upwards. Use a 3 mm Allen wrench to remove the bleed screw from the caliper. While slowly lowering the caliper below the brake lever, watch the open bleed port of the caliper. Oil will begin to rise up in the caliper port as you lower the caliper below the lever. When the oil is near the top of the threads, attach the bleed valve hand tight. This will help to keep air from entering the brake system when attaching the bleed valve. And then attach the syringe and bleed hose to the bleed nipple. Make sure the bleed nipple remains facing down throughout the bleed procedure. Loosen the bleed nipple one eighth of a turn and slowly push the mineral oil into the caliper. The goal is to push the air out of the system with the mineral oil. So, do not push the oil through too quickly. While pushing the oil through the caliper, look into the funnel and watch as the oil and air bubbles appear. Once you no longer see air bubbles coming out of the lever into the funnel, temporarily tighten the bleed nipple. Top off the lever reservoir with Shimano mineral oil before beginning the bleed procedure. Periodically check and add oil to the reservoir as needed during the bleed procedure. Do not let the reservoir go dry. If it does, air will enter the brake system and you'll have to add oil and start the bleeding process over. Remove the bleed nipple cap from the nipple and attach the 7 mm box end wrench to the bleed nipple. Attach the bleed hose with the collecting bag or bottle to the bleed nipple. Loosen the bleed nipple one eighth of a turn and pull the brake lever a few times to prime the system. This will help get the oil moving through and out of the caliper. While periodically checking the reservoir and adding oil when needed, lightly tap the brake hose in all sides of the caliper with a small screwdriver to help dislodge any air bubbles trapped in the system. 
Now pre-lube the new brake hose before attaching it to the brake lever. Fill the syringe from the Pro Bleed tool with Shimano mineral oil. Make sure all air has been removed from the hose and syringe. Attach a 7mm box end wrench to the bleed nipple and then attach the syringe and hose. Loosen the bleed nipple one eighth of a turn and slowly push mineral oil into the caliper. As you're pushing the oil through, watch for mineral oil coming out of the brake hose. When you see the oil overflow, tighten the bleed nipple. Leave the syringe and hose attached. Remove the hose from the zip tie. Check to make sure the olive is five millimeters from the outer edge of the insert. Apply a light coat of grease to the threads and the outside of the olive. Push the hose into the lever, then attach the connector bolt. While pushing the hose into the lever, use an 8 mm wrench to tighten the connector bolt. Tighten to the torque specifications of 5 to 7 newton meters or 44 to 60 inch pounds.